Not gonna lie, I was expecting less. Hey guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and Founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, we're doing a detailed review of the Oticon Intent Hearing Aids by ChatGPT. Oticon was the first hearing aid manufacturer to use a trained deep neural network for sound processing inside of their hearing aids. And fun fact, they are the first hearing aid manufacturer to come up with a second generation of a deep neural network that they have inside of their Oticon Intent devices. The Intent came out back in February of 2024, which means that there's nearly two years of data as well as patient experiences published online that ChatGPT can use to formulate a review of these devices. So I figured it was time to find out what ChatGPT actually knows about these hearing aids so it can tell us exactly why these hearing aids have been so popular and continue to maintain their popularity over the past couple years. But before I ask ChatGPT to do a detailed review of the Oticon Intent hearing aids, do me a huge favor and click the like button. It really helps out the channel. And if you are not yet subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on, go ahead and do that as well. It's greatly appreciated. And feel free to let me know what you think about ChatGPT's ability to do a detailed review of a pair of hearing aids down in the comment section once we're done. So just like I did with my ChatGPT reviews of other hearing aids, I went ahead and prompted ChatGPT to give me a review of the Oticon Intent hearing aid, and this is what it came up with. Here's a detailed review of the Oticon Intent hearing aid. What it does well, where it falls short, and who might benefit most from it. As with all hearing aids, real world performance depends heavily on your hearing loss, the fit, and how well it's programmed. Honestly, I really like what ChatGPT put in parentheses here because it's absolutely true. No hearing aid on the planet is any good at all unless it's been fit and programmed properly. All right, so what is the Oticon Intent? The Oticon Intent is a new flagship line launched in early 2024. It's a behind-the-ear, receiver-and-canal-style device with rechargeable batteries, lithium-ion, and smart features. It is built to handle challenging listening environments with features intended to adapt automatically to changing soundscapes. The Intent line has multiple technology levels, Intent 1, 2, 3, etc., so that more basic or premium features depend on which model is chosen. All right, so some of my observations from this initial section here, the Oticon Intent hearing aid is only available in a receiver in canal style. It is not available in a BTE style. They also mentioned that it's available in multiple technology levels, which is absolutely true, but it's technically available in level one, level two, level three, and level four. Now, all of the features and customizations that are available inside of the Oticon Intent devices truly do depend on the level of technology that you purchase. The lower in technology level that you go, the more features and customizations are taken away from your hearing care professional when they're trying to optimize the performance of these devices for you. So if you wanna make sure that you get the most features and customizations, the top tier is the Intent 1, and the bottom tier is the Intent 4. And side note here, this is the first time that Oticon has actually made a fourth tier. Usually they've only made the top three tiers. Nevertheless, let's get into the key strengths and innovations of these hearing aids according to ChatGPT. Strength, advanced sound processing, what it does. It uses a deep neural network, DNN 2.0, and more sound intelligence 3.0 to better distinguish speech from noise. Real world benefits and notes. In lab tests, it performs a very well in speech and noise tasks often well above average for the devices in its class. Now this is all absolutely true, however they don't go into very much detail on what actually makes the sound processing of this hearing aid so good. First and foremost, the first deep neural network that Oticon created, they trained with over 12 million different sound samples to train it on the differences between speech and noise. In the second version of this deep neural network that's inside of the Intent hearing aids, they trained the deep neural network with even more sound samples. On top of that, they increased the channel resolution, going from 64 channels to 256 channels. This allowed Oticon to measure and categorize these different sounds much more precisely inside of the second version of the deep neural network. As a result of the expanded training and precision of the intent hearing aids inside of this second version of the deep neural network, it allowed them to achieve an additional two decibels of noise reduction, going from 10 decibels all the way up to 12 decibels inside of the intent one hearing aids. The next strength that they mention is the 4D sensor technology, which incorporates sensors that detect head movement, 
body movement and environmental cues to adapt microphone settings and sound focus. The real world benefit from this is that it helps the hearing aids adjust more dynamically when you're moving, for example, turning your head, which can help in conversational settings. Again, this is true and it is important, but it doesn't really tell you what the actual benefit is. Typically, the microphones of your hearing aids need to be pointing in different directions when you're doing different things. So if you're sitting down at a table speaking with someone who's directly in front of you, typically you want a directional microphone to be picking up the person who's right in front of you. But if you get up and you start walking around and you're turning your head, the hearing aids know that they need to open up the microphones to pick up sounds from different directions. Now when it comes to performance improvement, if you're just using the Deep Neural Network version 2.0, it gives you a 12% increase in your speech intelligibility index, which is really nice. But when you combine the 4D sensor and the Deep Neural Network version 2.0, this jumps up to 35% percent improvement. So just to make sure that we're all on the same page with the improvements that you get with the Oticon Intent hearing aids compared to previous generations of Oticon technology, let me go ahead and break it down for you. If we look at the training data that was used in the first generation of the Deep Neural Network, it was 12 million sound scenes and they expanded this with more sound scenes in version 2.0. The amount of analysis channels in the first version of the Deep Neural Network was only 64. This has been expanded to 256 with version 2.0. The maximum noise reduction was 10 decibels. It is now 12 decibels. The integration went from a fixed level of noise reduction to an adaptive level of noise reduction thanks to the 4D sensor in version 2.0. And the speech intelligibility improvement, if we use the Deep Neural Network version 1.0 as the baseline, this has been increased by up to 12% if you're using the second version of the Deep Neural Network only, and up to 35% when you include the 4D sensor as well. Keep in mind that the 4D sensor is only available inside of the top two tier levels of the Oticon Intent. All right, so I feel like I'm beating up ChatGPT pretty bad here, so let's just keep moving on. The next strength is the rechargeable battery with fast charging. Full charge gives about 20 hours of use, a shorter boost charge for 30 minutes gives several hours. This matches modern expectations for rechargeable hearing aids. Users report that battery life is generally not problematic. Improved connectivity now supports Bluetooth low energy, in parentheses, LE audio, and is AuraCast ready for future broadcast audio in public spaces. This is intended to reduce power consumption and improve streaming, although real benefits depend on your phone and whether public venues adopt the transmitters. Completely agree about the battery life, and the other thing that's really cool about this is that it keeps the hearing aid actually pretty small. Small. This is one of the smaller devices that can give you that amount of battery life with such a small lithium battery inside of it. And just to clarify what ChatGPT did tell us is that these are AuraCast ready, but they are not yet compatible with AuraCast. That will require an update of firmware in the future. All right, back to the strengths. We've got small ergonomic design options. Oticon tells that the intent is their smallest Bluetooth receiver and canal design yet, intended for better comfort and discretion. Many users say it is comfortable to wear all day long, even with glasses, and I totally agree on that. Strong lab ratings. In expert reviews, Hear Advisor, the intent achieved a sound grade of A and ranked in the top 5% of prescription devices tested. In tuned fitting conditions, it performed especially well on streaming, feedback handling, and speech and noise tasks. ChatGPT is spot on with this. I'm glad that it picked this up from Hear Advisor. So Hear Advisor is an independent third-party testing lab. So they're basically comparing different hearing aids to each other, apples to apples with the same testing protocol. When it came to speech and noise performance, the Oticon Intent hearing aid came in second place only to the Phonak Odeo Sphere hearing aid, which means that this hearing aid is fantastic when it comes to hearing better in background noise. Now, as far as the strengths of the Oticon Intent hearing aids, that is as much as ChatGPT gave us. And I happen to think it missed a few different things. First and foremost, they greatly improved the physical fit of these hearing aids based on the angle of the receiver wire that they're using because everybody's ear canal kind of curves to the back. They actually put more of a curvature on this wire, which means that it holds better inside of your ear, even without using one of those annoying retention filaments. And you'd be hard pressed to find a hearing aid that is actually better than the Oticon Intent hearing aid when it comes to amplifying high frequencies. And considering that the majority of people who have a hearing loss have a high frequency hearing loss, it means the Oticon Intent hearing aid is going to be great for a lot of people. 
I also think they undersold the Bluetooth connectivity of the Oticon Intent hearing aids. I've been using the LE Audio Bluetooth with these and my Samsung Galaxy phone for nearly two years at this point, well ahead of many hearing aid manufacturers out there. On top of that, you still get access to the Oticon Companion app that Oticon has been investing time and resources into to make it even better. That app can adjust your volume levels, your programs, your program settings. You can even do a remote care session with your hearing care professional directly through the app. And on top of that, if you're an Apple user and you have an Apple Watch, you can even adjust your hearing aids directly from your Apple Watch without having to break out your phone. All right, so now that we're done with the strengths of the Oticon Intent hearing aids, let's jump into some of the weaknesses and limitations according to ChatGPT about these hearing aids. Weakness or concern? Bluetooth slash connectivity issues, especially with iPhones. What people say? Some users report dropped connections, inconsistency, or one side losing signal. Caveats in context. Some reports say that LE Audio helps more with Android and newer devices than with iPhones. Honestly, I can't disagree with any of that, but honestly, after having worked with a variety of different hearing aids and different smart devices, I can tell you that the biggest problem here is that the hearing aids are starting to outpace the technology of the smartphones, and that's likely what's leading to a lot of these connectivity issues. I mean, heck, these hearing aids have had LE audio for years, and iPhone still doesn't have LE audio. Another weakness, though, is no user replaceable batteries. Because the device uses internal lithium ion batteries, if battery performance degrades, you cannot just swap them in the clinic. The device may need servicing. This is actually a pretty big change from the previous generation of rechargeable Oticon hearing aids. We used to be able to replace the lithium ion battery inside of the rechargeable devices prior to the Oticon Intent. And on top of that, there is no disposable battery option for the Oticon Intent, which actually upsets a lot of people. Another weakness, apparently, is the simplified controls and fewer manual options. The Intent uses a single push button instead of a rocker switch and relies more on the app for fine control. Some users prefer more tactile controls. Caveats and context, for users who like manual control, this is a trade-off. The automated adaptation is intended to reduce the need for frequent manual adjustments. Honestly, I can understand where ChatGPT is coming from this. Some people do like that tactile feel of an adjustment button on their hearing aids, but these hearing aids largely can be set and forget, meaning you don't have to constantly be fiddling with them. If you want to do some volume adjustment, you can easily do that with the push buttons that are on there. If you want to change programs, you can still easily do that with the push buttons that are on there. So I don't really see where you're lacking the functionality other than the fact that you have single buttons rather than double buttons on each side. Another weakness or concern is the mixed performance gain, not a miracle cure. Some patients report improvements, but not always a dramatic difference versus previous models especially if their hearing environment is very challenging, especially in extremely noisy settings, even top tier hearing aids may struggle. Honestly, I've got to say that these hearing aids have been really good performing devices in background noise. Now, sure, they don't have the same amount of noise reduction ability as some of the other hearing aids out on the market, but the amount of separation of speech from the noise that you get is on par with every other hearing aid manufacturer on the market, if not better. Honestly, the biggest reason why ChatGPT is probably picking up on this is because 70% of hearing aids that are out there right now are not being fit and programmed properly by a hearing care professional because they do not follow comprehensive best practices. So honestly, you can't expect to have great performance in background noise if you've never had a procedure like realer measurement performed on your hearing aids. And the final weakness of these hearing aids is cost and availability. As a premium device, the intent will come at a premium price and you'll need a qualified audiologist for fitting. The exact cost depends on your region, technology level chosen, and the clinic's services. Again, just like I mentioned earlier, you have different tier levels of these hearing aids. And if you want to save money, all you do is you drop down to the technology level that you can afford and then it's the job of your hearing care professional to optimize those devices for you. Now if you do want the Cadillac of the Oticon Intent, meaning the Oticon Intent 1, yes it's going to cost you more money because you get that improved performance. But at the end of the day, if affordability is an issue for you, that's why they have the lower tiers of technology. All right, let's get into ChatGPT's user experience and anecdotes. Here are a few real user experiences and feedback to complement the lab results. 
A user on Hearing Tracker reported that compared to their prior Oticon Real 1s, the Intense offered a significant improvement in noisy situations, for example in a sports bar, and better wind noise reduction. That same user did note that the Bluetooth to their iPhone 15 still has reliability issues, meaning dropouts or one side disconnecting, even at a short range. Others mentioned the focusing shift as you move your head happens smoothly and naturally, not abruptly. From clinic reviews, many patients fitted with them report better clarity and comfort in everyday listening, though some feel the improvement over previous models is incremental. Honestly, this is really good feedback from ChatGPT. Anytime that I'm doing a detailed review of a new hearing aid that comes out, I'm doing all of it based on my experience because honestly, no one else in the world has it when I'm doing the testing. That being said, I agree with everything that ChatGPT has just said because after two years of working with these hearing aids on patients of mine, they all tell me pretty much the same thing. All right, so let's go ahead and read the verdict. Is the Otakon Intent good? Yes. Overall, it's a very strong, modern hearing aid with a lot of smart features. If you pair a high-quality device with a good audiologist for careful fitting, real ear measurement, follow-up fine-tuning, the intent can provide real benefits, especially in noise, speech clarity, and adaptivity. Honestly, is adaptivity a word? I don't even know. I gotta Google that. However, it is not flawless. Connectivity, especially for iPhone users, may still be problematic in some cases, and if you give up some trade-offs like battery swappability and manual controls in favor of automation and sleek design. If I were advising someone considering the intent, make sure the audiologist is very comfortable fitting multiple brands so the decision isn't biased. Ask them to test Bluetooth reliability between your exact phone and the hearing aids before committing. Insist on a trial period so you can evaluate your real life environments, restaurants, wind, and travel. And be sure to schedule follow-up fine-tuning visits. The more you tweak the fit and program, the better the performance you'll get. Ultimately, I agree with everything that ChatGPT has said here. I don't like the term trial period because it insinuates that you're just trying the hearing aids rather than your hearing care professional taking you through a comprehensive best practice fitting with those devices. But ultimately, I see ChatGPT's point. Of course, I couldn't stop there. I had to prompt ChatGPT for one more thing. Where should I go to find a hearing care professional who follows best practices? And surprise, surprise, but ChatGPT believes that the best place to find a hearing care professional who follows best practices is the Hearing Up Provider Network. What makes Hearing Up different? Hearing Up was created specifically to help patients find audiologists and hearing instrument specialists who commit to best practice hearing care. These providers follow clinical best practices outlined by the American Academy of Audiology and Dr. Cliff Olson's best practice checklist, which includes comprehensive diagnostic testing, not just a simple hearing screen, real ear measurement, REM, to verify hearing aid programming, speech and noise testing, ongoing follow-up care and fine tuning, and patient-centered counseling and education. These steps ensure that you get the full benefit of your hearing aids, something that many clinics skip. How to use the Hearing Up Provider Finder. Go to hearingup.com forward slash providers. Enter your zip code or city, and you'll see a list of vetted Hearing Up approved providers near you. Each provider has been personally vetted and trained to follow best practices. Many patients travel hours to see a Hearing Up provider because the quality of care is that much higher. Why it matters. The hearing aid itself, like the Oticon Intent, is only as good as how it's fit and verified. Even a top tier device underperforms if it is not programmed correctly. This is why seeing a hearing up provider can make the difference between just okay hearing aids and life changing results. Honestly, nothing makes me happier than to see that ChatGPT even values the Hearing Up Provider Network because it knows how important finding a best practice provider is. And honestly, I couldn't have said it any better myself. But I wanna hear from you guys. How do you think that ChatGPT did with the review of the Oticon Intent hearing aids? Did it do a good job or did it miss the mark? Let me know down in the comment section. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.